And welcome to another episode of Aloha Authentic with Kamakapili, Hawaii's only TV show where we're featuring our own local artisans and cultural practitioners and having them share their mana'o, their thoughts and their mo'olelo, their stories of their work and their practice with you in the comfort of your own home. This episode is going to be a little bit different as we've been evolving through the episodes. Um, we're going to be going back to Prince Kuhio Day on March 26th and celebrating the life of who Prince Jonah Kuhio Kalani Anaole Piikoi was and what legacy had he left for us. All of us in her, uh, here in Hawaii are beneficiaries of Prince Kuhio and his contributions to Hawaii. So we really want to just step back and highlight and give honor to such a man. But before we do that and we step into our episode, of course, we have our own beautiful protocol here that we have to um, follow by. But since I said beautiful, I just want to point out the beautiful location that we're here on this episode in the Ahupua or the land division of Kailua on the island of Oahu here at Ulupo Heiau with Kauai Nui Marsh behind in the distance. As we mentioned earlier in our past episode of Sacred Sites, we stopped at a place called uh, Napohaku Hauvahine, which had to do with Kauai Nui Marsh. So I invite you to go check that out and learn a little bit more about what this marsh is. But going back to this episode and our protocol, we have, of course, our umeke or our bowl of poi. And we have our poke that we're going to have some poopoos throughout this episode, of course, because we have to have good energy. Remember, Tutu always said, no negativity is spoken when the bowl is open. <laughs> Nope. Stickers are going to come out soon, watch that. <laughs> but anyway, and the bowl of poise. So this whole episode is about positivity and creation and healing. You know, giving our, our the spotlight and the highlight on our artists and having them really educate all of us about their perspective of Hawaii and what Hawaii continues to share. As all of us, we don't know what this whole beautiful place entails as a whole. So we're always learning every single day. So that's what the, the bowl of poi and the poke is. Um, but we only invite you to grab you and urge you, not grab you, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> so we urge you to grab your umeke of poi, your plate of poke, grab your chopsticks or your fork or your little spoon over there to go poo poo and let's enjoy us, uh, ourselves some mo'olelo time. And before we stepping into that, we have our Did You Know series and we're just continuing to share some plants around our aina, our land here in Hawaii, that you may just actually walk by and not actually know that there's more purpose or more mana to these plants that we think may be weeds. So for this month, our Did You Know series is featuring the plant Eva Eva. It's also known as maiden's hair and it helps any kind of respiratory illnesses such as asthma, emphysema, you would steep this leaves or the leaves in a mild tea and you would drink it. Now, Eva Eva loves to grow on rocky areas where it's wet and where it's constantly moist. Now, on a cautionary note, and please I advise everybody to not just take what I say and go and run with it and think you know what you're gonna what you're doing. Because with La Aula Pa'au, there's a lot of practice, a lot of advisories, a lot of things that you gotta be careful and you have to know. So don't just step in. With all of these things that I'm sharing is really just urging you to go out and learn some more. You know, to really go out and start identifying these plants and really just understanding that there's more. And then um, the whole point is you find out what the more is you know go advise yourself with some doctors and professionals go advise yourself with some la'au lapa'au practitioners and they can continue to help the university of hawaii is a perfect place to start when it comes to finding out more on hawaiian medicine that being said and i'm going to take a few seconds because i was really just talking a lot real fast <laughs> um prince kuhil day march 26th i believe he turns 146 back on march 26th um, there is a big celebration that we were doing on that day in honor of Prince Jonah Kuhio Kalani Anaole Piikoi. And we wanted to really just showcase and use this episode to have him as our special guest. Instead of featuring him, he's actually right over here, you just don't know it. We're going to use our, um, some of our local artists and practitioners to showcase how they work contributes and their messages of their art contributes to the celebration of who Prince Kuhio was. Now before we do that, just to give a little bit background, Prince Kuhio was a very, very um, established Hawaiian ali'i. And when I mean established, I would rather say um, he, he was very grounded within himself. 
and having the ability to walk in both worlds. During the time of Prince Kuhio, he, it was the time coming from King Kalakaua where he was really out and going and traveling and ex learning new things and adopting new ways, bringing back to the islands and incorporating it with our lifestyle here. Then he went into the, the reign of Queen Liliuokalani, his sister, and that time of reign was a dramatic difference from King Kalakaua was one of the overthrow, you know, and the whole um, the whole wave of Western influence that started to sink its roots into the land and overcome the old traditional ways and the Hawaiian kingdom. So Prince Kuhio started to experience that within his life as a younger boy, and then stepping into being a rebellious person against the overthrow and trying to get his auntie, Queen Liliuokalani, back onto the throne. So there was a group called the Royalists that went against the government to try to reinstate the queen back into her throne after she was overthrown in 1893. Now, because of this um, battle that had taken place, Prince Kuhio ended up being arrested and was imprisoned for one year because of that. And after he came out, he actually was pressured into running to become a U.S. elect Congress to the United States and he actually ended up saying okay you know he, he, his kuleana is to do so so when he did and he ran he actually won on his first try and following that election or that win to his election he fulfilled a consecutive 10 terms in office as the second delegate from Hawaii to the United States Congress. And he was actually the first full-blooded Hawaiian to U.S. Congress, as well as the first prince of royal, um, what is that, manan lineage and, and hyacracy or whatever that word is. But he was the first one of that, of that mana to be in U.S. Congress. And at that time, serving for 19 years, from 1903 to 1922, Prince Kuhio had established tremendous accomplishments for the Native Hawaiian people and the state of Hawaii. Um, he was the first person to introduce the bill for statehood of Hawaii becoming a state within the, the United States of America. He also was the one who um, established the Hawaiian Civic Clubs to be able to get opportunities or find ways to preserve what culture had started to become lost and overrun by Western influence. He was also the man who established the Homestead Act, which allotted 200,000 acres of lands here in Hawaii um, to Native Hawaiians for homesteading. And today, today we know that as the Hawaiian Homesteads. So we are still affected by um, this particular man, what he did many, many decades ago, and we are all beneficiaries. So trying to really showcase that and educate really and broaden people's awareness of our lives here in Hawaii. So we invite you to sit back, relax and enjoy the mo'olelo from our artists at the Prince Kuhio Day celebration all in honor and appreciation of a man named Prince Jonah Kuhio Kalani Anaole Piikoi. I'm here with uh, Hawaiian Arts and Hospitality Association. I'm with Nalima Milihulu no Eau, which means the skilled hands that touch the feathers. It was a name that was given to my tutu by Auntie Edith Kanapaole. And um, so my tutu learned this art back in the 50s because of Aloha Week, and then it became her life's passion. She passed it on to my mama and taught me when I was five years old. So I've been doing it all my life. But now it's my turn. Both of them have passed on to the better life. And I'm left behind, but I get to share this wonderful art and teach it to those that are willing to learn. And um, so we have various styles of lehulu that we do. And we have from humu papa to poi poi, kamoi. I don't have examples of the other styles that we do, but there's other variations of these styles. And we have various feathers. Uh, whether it be dyed goose, or it's pheasant, or it's peacock, or it's guinea hen, or Chinese golden pheasant. Well, we do fun things. Also, we make earrings, we make bracelets, we make um, hair picks. Uh, we're expanding beyond, but we stick with our tradition with Lehulu. Uh, 
Don Yoshimura Studio is me, Don Yoshimura, and um, I do primarily on-site watercolor landscapes. I also uh, like to make things out of clay. So um, I've been working in clay uh, for about two years now, and the thing that I like about the, the clay and my watercolors is they all have a majority of water in them when you work with them. And I think water is such a part of Hawaii and my identity of why I'm connected to the islands. Um, so Don Yoshimura Studio is really just about my expressing my love for Hawaii and the land. And especially in Kaneohe, I paint, I paint a lot and, um, on the east side, but I paint wherever I go. So if I travel to Sweden or uh, England or Iceland last year with my husband, then I'll spend time painting there. And that's my way of kind of getting to know the places that I've been. Oh, hi everybody. Um, just displaying all my artwork that I have. Um, I do pyrography work. So you'll notice um, the different types of wood, leather pieces. So what is With Aloha Lehua is the name of my company. And basically it's just everything that I do is done with um, with love, with aloha, all positive energy, um, just bringing awareness and promotion to our native Hawaiian foliage, our resources, and our ecosystem, and that when you wear it, you um, are wearing something good, something positive. So part of my platform is just um, bringing awareness to our native foliage, and one of the focuses is the rapid ohia death. So a lot of the pieces you will see the Ohia Lehua design. Um, I have a botanical line of cards um, and some wall hangings and basically at the end of the year a portion of all the proceeds go back to the UH Foundation which study um, the rapid Ohia death trying to find um, some type of cure or how they can maintain this um, disease that's killing our beloved Ohia Lehua. Aloha! Noa Noa is all about tapa. It's about the various tapas from all over Oceania. The style that you see I'm wearing is called the kauru, which is actually a Maori. This is a Maori tapa. And we have ones from Hawaii, beautiful Hawaiian tapa, Tonga, Fiji, Samoa, Papua New Guinea, Northern Hawaiian Islands, Cook Islands, Africa, also Borneo, just beautiful pieces. And today, I'm so proud today to see so many of our wonderful Hawaiians out there practicing Ohekapala and bringing back all the tapas to tell the right mo'olelo. I am Fran from Ali'i's Treasures. Ali'i means dainty, heavenly, so that's what this is. Uh, I started five years ago just from a hobby and uh, we started finding seashells and some sea glass and, um, and make everything one of a kind. So what you see might not necessarily be the same color and there's always something different about something. Well, since I've started, I've been able to spread this globally, which is something that I really wanted to do when I started, was to just spread aloha one piece at a time, basically. Because every piece that I create, it comes from my family and the time I spend with my family. So I just wanted to be able to spread that to everyone. I, I make lay portals. Um, and while I'm making them, I always think of our royal ancestors and how they must have loved us. And as I make them, I feel joyful and I can feel their love. And they must have loved us a lot because they left us a phenomenal legacy. And as I make my lipo'os, that's what I feel. And it brings me great joy. 
I use the sunrise shells and I make hat bands out of them. I take natural products like the Milo pods um, and I try to use a lot of the natural uh, Niao and Hina's to mix with my flowers in my lipos and hat bands. Um, I was given for Christmas a whole kit of clay and I asked my, and she gave it to me in this beautiful bowl. I love the bowl. But I asked her why did she give me all these clay you know, packages? And she said that she knew that if anyone could make something beautiful out of it, that I could. And that's when I started doing the clay flowers. Last forever. Uncle Judge Naofi told me it's the forever Lepo. Our company is about just loving being local. We embrace everything that it's about of Hawaii. Tidaus is a name that my grandmother and a few of my aunties called each other. Back in the day, everybody was Tita. But I knew who my grandmother was talking to whenever she picked up the phone and she said, Hi, Tita Oos, how are you? And uh, just cracked up because my grandmother was always correcting me whenever I spoke pigeon. I'm like, I'm from Kalihi, I gotta speak pigeon. So when she talked to my Tita Oos aunties, that's when her pigeon just let loose. <laughs> It's an honor of the camaraderie that they had. Aloha. Okay, I'm a Hawaiian man that does Hawaiian feather kahili. And, I, and with my feather kahilis, I honor my ancestors, my ali'i especially, my family. Uh, my feather work is simply feather work. Some people call me a master feather work, a, mas a feather master, but I, I don't think I'm a, a master. I think feel that it's just in my genes that I do this work in honor of my my culture and help people share and in, invite their culture into our program. The Kahili represents the presence of Ali'i. It represents the presence of uh, it's, it sets boundaries for to, to show where the boundaries are where you can go and where you cannot go. When an Ali is present, normally there are Kahili posted around him, giving you the perimeters where that's as far as you can go, you can't get any closer. It represents that there's a raw presence. I'm an artist. I am painting a Hawaiian cultural series that shows how a culture is passed down. So in it I've got some spirit figures that aren't ghosts. They are just showing that the teachers, the mentors, Kumu, brothers, sisters, parents, grandparents. My whole series is entitled Ike Ho'omau Koko, which means consciousness. And it's, in it I'm calling Hawaiians to remember who they are because until they remember where they came from, they won't know where they're going. How does your work is um, celebrating Prince Mario today? I painted two different paintings that include Prince Kuhio. Of all the ali'i, Prince Kuhio has the, the most present, ongoing legacy. Well, for Prince Kuhio, you know, we're so grateful because my tutu, where she started teaching, was through the Hawaiian Civic Clubs, which is all because of Prince Kuhio. That's part of what he gave back to the people of Hawaii. And back in the 70s, during that Renaissance period, when all these Hawaiian Civic Clubs were growing, my tutu was one of the many women that went around to, you know, all the different parks where all the people from the Civic Clubs came and they learned the various arts. So we continue to do that and we mahalo Prince Kuhio for what he has given to us. Prince Kuhio, I feel, was really someone who loved Hawaii and all the people that lived there. So I think that one of the words that I feel that was more in use when I was growing up were uh, you had Kanaka Maoli now, but you also had Malahini and you had, you know, when I was growing up, 
people were talking about this concept of uh, kikioka aina, and I always felt, even though I'm fourth generation Japanese American, I always felt that I was a child of this place because that's all I knew. And my family from Japan were originally farmers. So I feel that Prince Kohio, he really worked in Congress to get the Hawaiian Homestead Land Act. Um, so I think my connection to him is just this real appreciation for someone who loved where he came from. I think it's just um, the celebration of everything that he stood for um, and showing how part of my kuleana to celebrate our Hawaiian culture and what he did for our people. Um, I hope it reflects in the work that I do here. Mahalo. Um, today you see me celebrating with the rest of our ohana here and community, Prince Kuhio Day. I'm wearing the red and yellow colors that our ali'i had such a high regard for. And as long as I do it well, it will be part of our, um, our history, our, 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 you know, love for our heritage and our culture. He was a great representative of Native Hawaiians, but he was more of an international figure. He represented Hawaii in, on the continent as a representative a part of Congress. And it's wonderful to just be part of this celebration, honoring this man who had a vision for his people and also the other residents of, citizens of Hawaii. I'm honoring the Prince Kuhio because of his work, his extensive work for our Hawaiian people. The land that we're sitting on right now at Kamakana Ali'i is lands that were once part of his, his dream of giving back the land to our Hawaiian, native, native Hawaiian people. This is what, the, what is called the Hawaiian homeland. So we hope you enjoyed some mo'olelo about who Prince Kuhio was. But even the reason of, of me just repeating his name over and over is to re just really not giving the opportunity of his name and who he was to kind of settle down. You know, we are all beneficiaries, as mentioned before, of specifically this man for many different reasons. Today, a lot of businesses, a lot of organizations are built and operated on Hawaiian homestead. So the fact that we have lands that is dedicated to giving back to our native Hawaiian people and finding more opportunity to get our own people back on our own lands. You know, and there was something really interesting that I read. Um, as mentioned before, he was the first person to introduce a bill of bringing Hawaii into statehood to the United States of America. And then learning about, uh, reading about him more, following his whole term in Congress and becoming so established within the country of America, Prince Jonah Kuhio became a very proud American citizen and it says he was very eager and took any opportunity he could to educate and to share with his native Hawaiian people back at home the benefits of being an American. So Prince Kuhio was a man of balance. You know, it wasn't something I think it was easy to do. I think he, every ali'i in the reign had their own pros and cons of, uh, and their challenges and their, and their highlights. Um, Prince Kuhio was nothing different. You know, he was walking and had to establish his own balance for not only himself and his family, but his his people. You know, the kingdom that he comes from, the 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 people that he comes from, and his kupuna. So, in my perspective, Prince Kuhio is a role model, is a visionary, is someone who was looking and had a goal in mind because he seen what was happening, something he had no control of. So he had to find a way to be able to adapt and evolve yet not giving up on who he was not kind of getting over the fact that things happened you know we have to evolve and we have to develop economic development finding ways where we can grow in this western world in this western lifestyle but at the same time on this balance that you have to have you know our people make sure our people get Get them back on the lands that was one of the things that he said was making sure that his people are back on his lands that was the whole point of hawaiian homestead so in my perspective long story short prince kuhio was a man of balance was a man of um integrity to who he was yet eagerness to to be able to bring his people up to par 
with the rest of the world. So mahalo again for tuning in. We have so much more things to share and so much other ways that we can take this show. If you have any suggestions or comments of what you might see, who you want to share their mo'olela with you or whatever it may be, please email us at kamakapiliaalohaauthentic.org. Check out our past episodes at alohaauthentic.org and share your aloha today. So until next time, we'll see you next month. Ahui ho. Take care of yourself. Malama pono. Aloha. <laughs>